This is Bishop George Murray. On behalf of your Catholic friends and neighbors in the Diocese of Youngstown, I invite you to join us for this celebration of the Holy Mass. Good morning, and welcome to our celebration of Holy Mass. Today is Palm Sunday of the Passion of the Lord. Our celebrant is Father Jim Corda, president of CTNY, the Catholic television network of Youngstown. I'm Barb Zorn from Holy Family Parish and from St. Columba Cathedral. As we pray this Mass, let us remember in our prayers Stella Bylas. All glory, Lord, and honor to you, Redeemer King, to whom the lips of children made sweet hosannas ring. Dear brothers and sisters, since the beginning of Lent until now, we have prepared our hearts by penance and charitable works. Today we gather together to herald with the whole church the beginning of the celebration of our Lord's Paschal Mystery, that is to say of his passion and resurrection. For it was to accomplish this mystery that he entered into his own city of Jerusalem. Therefore, with all faith and devotion, let us commemorate the Lord's entry into the city for our salvation, following in his footsteps, so that being made by his grace partakers of the cross, we may have a share also in his resurrection and in his life. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, sanctify these branches with your blessing, that we who follow Christ the King in exaltation may reach the eternal Jerusalem through him who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, who as an example of humility for the human race to follow, caused our Savior to take flesh and submit to the cross, graciously grant that we may heed his lesson of patient suffering and so merit a share in his resurrection, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The Lord God has given me a well-trained tongue that I might know how to speak to the weary a word that will rouse them. Morning after morning, he opens my ear that I may hear, and I have not rebelled, have not turned back. I gave my back to those who beat me, my cheeks to those who plucked my beard. My face I did not shield from buffets and spitting. The Lord God is my help, therefore I am not disgraced. I have set my face like flint, knowing that I shall not be put to shame. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God. My God, my God, why have you abandoned me? My, my God, God, my God, God why, why have, have you abandoned me? me? All who see me scoff at me. They mock me with parted lips. They wag their heads. He relied on the Lord. Let him deliver him. Let him rescue him if he loves him. My, my God, my God, God, my God why, why have, have you, you abandoned me? me? Indeed, many dogs surround me. A pack of evildoers closes in upon me. They have pierced my hands and my feet. I can count all my bones. My, my God, God, my, my God, God, why, why have, have you, you abandoned, abandoned me? me? They divide my garments among them, and for my vesture they cast lots. But you, O Lord, be not far from me. O my help, hasten to aid me. My, my God, God, my God, God why, why have, have you, you abandoned, abandoned me? me? I will proclaim your name to my brethren. In the midst of the assembly, I will praise you. You who fear the Lord, praise him. All you descendants of Jacob, give him glory. 
Revere him, all you descendants of Israel. My, my God, God, my God, God why, why have you, have you abandoned, abandoned me? me? A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Christ Jesus, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God something to be grasped. Rather, he emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, coming in human likeness and found human in appearance. He humbled himself, becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Because of this, God greatly exalted him and bestowed on him the name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bend of those in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. The word of the Lord. Thanks be, be to, to God. God. Glory and praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Christ became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Because of this, God greatly exalted him and bestowed on him the name which is above every name. Glory and praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord be with you. The Passion of Our Lord Jesus Christ According to St. Luke. The elders of the people, chief priests and scribes, arose and brought Jesus before Pilate. They brought charges against him, saying, We found this man misleading our people. He opposes the payment of taxes to Caesar and maintains that he is the Christ, a king. Pilate asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? He said to him in reply, you say so. Pilate then addressed the chief priests and the crowds, I find this man not guilty. But they were adamant and said, He is inciting the people with his teaching throughout all Judea, from the Galilee where he began even to hear. On hearing this, Pilate asked if the man was a Galilean. And upon learning that he was under Herod's jurisdiction, he sent him to Herod, who was in Jerusalem at the time. Herod was very glad to see Jesus. He had been wanting to see him for a long time, for he had heard about him and had been hoping to see him perform some sign. He questioned him at length, but he gave him no answer. The chief priests and the scribes, meanwhile, stood by accusing him harshly. Herod and his soldiers treated him contemptuously and mocked him. And after clothing him in resplendent garment, he sent him back to Pilate. Herod and Pilate became friends that very day, even though they had been enemies formerly. Pilate then summoned the chief priests, the rulers, and the people, and said to them, You brought this man to me and accused him of inciting the people to revolt. I have conducted my investigation in your presence and have not found this man guilty of the charges you have brought against him. Nor did Herod, for he sent him back to us. So no capital crime has been committed by him. Therefore, I shall have him flogged and then release him. But altogether, they shouted out, Away with this man! Release Barabbas to us. Now Barabbas had been in prison for a rebellion that had taken place in the city and for murder. Again, Pilate addressed them, still wishing to release Jesus. But they continued their shouting, Crucify him! Crucify him! Pilate addressed them a third time. What evil has this man done? I found him guilty of no capital crime. Therefore, I shall have him flogged 
and then release him. With loud shouts, however, they persisted in calling for his crucifixion, and their voices prevailed. The verdict of Pilate was that their demand should be granted. So he released the man who had been imprisoned for rebellion and murder for whom they asked. And he handed Jesus over to them to do with as they wished. As they led him away, they took hold of a certain Simon, a Cyrenian, who was coming in from the country. And after laying the cross on him, they made him carry it behind Jesus. A large crowd of people followed Jesus, including many women who mourned and lamented him. Jesus turned to them and said, Daughters of Jerusalem, do not weep for me. Weep instead for yourselves and for your children. For indeed the days are coming when people will say, Blessed are the barren, the wombs that never bore, and the breasts that never nursed. At that time, people will say to the mountains, Fall upon us, and to the hills, cover us. For if these things are done when the wood is green, what will happen when it is dry? Now two others, both criminals, were led away with him to be executed. When they came to the place called the Skull, they crucified him and the criminals there, one on his right, the other on his left. Then Jesus said, Father, forgive them. They know not what they do. They divided his garments by casting lots. The people stood by and watched. The rulers, meanwhile, sneered at him and said, He saved others. Let him save himself, if he is the chosen one, the Christ of God. Even the soldiers jeered at him. As they approached to offer him wine, they called out, If you are the king of the Jews, save yourself. Above him, there was an inscription that read, This is the king of the Jews. Now one of the criminals hanging there reviled Jesus, saying, Are you not the Christ? Save yourself and us. The other, however, rebuking him, said in reply, Have you no fear of God? For you are subject to the same condemnation. And indeed, we have been condemned justly, for the sentence we receive corresponds to our crimes. But this man has done nothing criminal. Then he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. He replied to him, Amen, I say to you, today you will be with me in paradise. It was now about noon, and darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon because of an eclipse of the sun. Then the veil of the temple was torn down the middle. Jesus cried out in a loud voice, Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. And when he had said this, he breathed his last. The centurion who witnessed what had happened glorified God and said, This man was innocent beyond doubt. When all the people who had gathered for this spectacle saw what had happened, they returned home beating their breasts, but all his acquaintances stood at a distance including the women who had followed him from the Galilee and saw these events. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. My friends, the cross of Christ is a fact of history. On a given day, in a given place, Jesus of Nazareth was crucified between two thieves. He was nailed to a cross at approximately nine o'clock in the morning and remained there until about three o'clock in the afternoon, at which time he was pronounced dead and placed in a tomb that belonged to Joseph of Arimathea. The gospel writers, Matthew, Mark, and Luke, all tell the same story. Each evangelist gives slightly different details, but the big picture is constant. At a place called Calvary, just outside the city gates, by the decree of a Roman governor named Pontius Pilate, Jesus of Nazareth 
died on a cross. You and I have heard that story so often that any of us can recite it from memory. But it happened so long ago and so far away that oftentimes we wonder if it has anything to do with our lives here and now. So why do we focus our attention on the cross of Christ? What has his dying got to do with our living? Let me make this point right away. Those first followers of Jesus grappled with the same issues. Many of them witnessed the crucifixion of Jesus with their own eyes. They were shocked and horrified. Then before the shock wore off, they experienced another shock, his resurrection. Slowly it dawned on them that he had risen from the dead and would be alive forever. But that cross cast a spell on them, and it cast a spell on their lives that they somehow could never forget. Let's face it, the cross says something about the true nature of sinfulness, but it also says that there are those people who are willing to pay the price for our sinfulness. And that is what Jesus did. The cross was not forced upon him. He accepted it voluntarily. He has led the way, and others have followed. There are actually people in this world who will take upon themselves the burden of the world and lay down their own lives for it. You see, the bottom line is this. In this world, nothing ever really gets changed and no one really ever gets saved until someone who doesn't have to voluntarily puts their life on the line. Christ did that for us, and many others have done so across the centuries. They have shared the cross of Christ. Every worthwhile thing in this world has come to us through sacrifice. There really is no room in our lives for pride or for selfishness. Someone has died for our sins. All that we can do in return is quietly and gratefully take up our cross and follow him. Together now, let us recite the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there, he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Humbly now, let us present to God our special petitions. For Pope Francis, successor of St. Peter, that through his words and actions, he may guide us and strengthen us in our Christian mission. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For leaders of all nations, especially those in the Holy Land, that they may enable all their citizens to worship freely. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For an end to the death penalty, which contradicts the dignity of the human person by depriving those affected of the possibility of remorse and redemption. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For those who feel lost or abandoned, that they may know the grace of God, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For all of us, as we complete our Lenten journeys, that we may be strengthened in faith, hope, and love as we gather to worship during this holy week. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. God in heaven, you hear our wants and you know our needs. We make them known through Christ our Lord. 
Amen. And let us pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Through the passion of your only begotten Son, O Lord, may our reconciliation with you be near at hand, so that though we do not merit it by our own deeds, yet by the sacrifice made once for all, we may already... Feel the effects of your mercy through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ your Son. For though innocent, he suffered willingly for sinners and accepted unjust condemnation to save the guilty. His death has washed away our sins, and his resurrection has purchased our justification. So with all the angels, we praise you. As in joyful celebration, we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up, for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is a chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and George, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. 
Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Our Father, Father, who who art art in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy thy name. Thy Thy kingdom kingdom come, come, thy thy will be done, on on earth as it is in heaven. heaven. Give Give us this day our daily bread, and and forgive us our trespasses. trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. And may the peace of Christ be with you always. And with your spirit. Lamb of God, you You take take away the sins sins of the world. world. Have Have mercy mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take take away the sins of the world. world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take take away the sins of the world. world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord, I am not worthy worthy that you should enter enter under my roof, roof, but but only only say say the word, and and my soul soul shall be healed. Body Christ. Let us pray. Nourish with these sacred gifts, we humbly beseech you, O Lord, that just as through the death of your Son, you have brought us to hope for what we believe, so by his resurrection, you may lead us to where you call, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thanks be to God. Were you there when they crucified my Lord? Were you there when they crucified my Lord? Oh, sometimes it causes me 